So here's something I promised to ask anybody in my class on the final. I will give you a quadratic function in general form, all multiplied out, and I will ask you to find the vertex, find the x-intercepts, find the y-intercepts, and sketch it. So let's go ahead and see how we can do. So to find the vertex, we need to put it in standard form by completing the square. Completing the square. So go ahead and get started. Leading coefficient has to be 1, which it is. I'm usually nice in my intermediate classes. My college algebra class, I'm less nice. We move that negative 3 off to the side. We put a little holder bin underneath to hold my perfect square trinomial. I take the linear coefficient, the x to the first coefficient, take half of that number, square it, add it inside the box, so plus 1, 2 over 2 is 1, 1 squared is 1, add it inside, subtract it outside to stay balanced, factor that perfect square trinomial you just created with the 1, x plus 1 squared, subtract the two pieces outside, negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4. Now I have that quadratic function in standard form, so I can read off the vertex. So the vertex, remember it gets the letters hk, negative 1, change the sign inside, keep the sign outside, negative 1, negative 4. Now we know where we've moved it, which you'd get from before, left 1, down 4, this is left 1, that's down 4. X-intercept, y equals 0. In functions, y gets played by that f of x. So 0 equals, you can either go up to the top, x squared plus 2x minus 3, or, now here's the part that I find most students don't like, is the choice. It's like, don't give me a choice, just tell me what to do and I'll do that. Can't do it. You need to decide which one you'd rather work with. And it might be just which one you come to first. If you hadn't already found the vertex, you might just go right to here. Say, okay, well, maybe I can factor it. If I can't factor it, I could use quadratic formula. That's fine. But if you have put it in the standard form by completing the square, then if you put a zero there, this is all set up for extracting a root. So however you're going to do it, um, you have enough time right now, you could go through and show that it works both ways. I'll go ahead and add that 4 across. I'm going to solve that my second version. Both ways get the same answer. Make sure you get that, though. Then square root both sides to make that square and go away. Remember your plus minus when you square root. So now we have plus or minus 2 equals x plus 1. Move the 1 across. Negative 1 plus or minus 2 equals x. So I'll go ahead and pop the answers over here. I have two of them. The y value for each is 0, y equals 0. And the two x values are negative 1 plus 2, positive 1. Negative 1 minus 2, negative 3. I now have two x-intercepts. I have a vertex. And now the y-intercept. Well, the y-intercept, I need x equal to 0. So here's a time where I will pop back up here to the original when it was in the general form. So if x is 0, this term goes away, that term goes away, and all I get is a y value of negative 3. So that's the point 0, negative 3. So let's get a quick sketch, putting all of those things together. So just mark a little bit on a graph here. So a y-intercept, 0, negative 3. It's a point on my graph. X-intercepts, negative 3, 0, and 1, 0. More points on my graph. Now the low point, the vertex is always the lowest or the highest point on your graph, the minimum or the maximum. So I don't want to use this y-intercept as a vertex because that's not it. I go over to negative 1, negative 4. There's my lowest point. So the vertex is always a lowest or a highest point on your graph. And there we have it.